Well, as you can see, we're in my garage today working on the old Skeeter. And specifically, what I'm doing today is installing new deck lights. So having good interior lights is awesome for any kind of boating, really. Specifically for me, I rig a lot of tackle and stuff when it's dark out, so having the lights on the inside is great. So I'm upgrading and adding a few lights to the inside of my boat today. The lights I am adding are these Extreme Pro deck lights uh, by Blue Water. They're really low profile light and they're very easy to install. They're LEDs, they come in a bunch of different colors. These ones happen to be red, match the boat. So there's a handful of things you need before you to really complete this install. The lights come with your hardware to mount them. However, uh, there's still some other stuff you need. Pliers, wire strippers, some extra wire, a hole saw, drill bit, countersink drill bit, fish tape, heat shrink butt connectors, tape measure, and a few other various things. So you don't need a ton, and it's a very, pretty simple install. So let's get to it. So to get started with the install, first things first, disconnect everything from the battery. You just know that nothing, no power is running to anything. So just a little peace of mind. Um, and then really I'm just going to pop this light that's already in here out. I'm not really doing much here. I just really want to pop it out and see what we're working with as far as wiring. I mean, I've been in this boat before, so I know what, what we're dealing with, but here's the light. Here's your power cables that we're going to be splicing into. I guess when it comes to splicing in your lights to get them on a switch, there's a few different options. What we're doing now is I'm just splicing into an existing power source with an existing switch. So that's just the easiest thing because it's already here. I have sealed switches, so it's just the easiest possible way to do it. Um, now, there's a couple other options. A lot of boats will have an empty accessory switch. So if you already had deck lights and you wanted to keep things the lights you're installing separate from those lights, you could potentially either tap them into an open accessory switch that your boat might have, or you could install a new switch and all your cabling is just going to run back to wherever you mount that switch and or wherever that extra accessory switch is. I'm not making it that complicated, I'm just tapping into the existing switch. So with that, I'm just going to go ahead and unpackage one of these lights comes with your mounting hardware here that you need. Two different rubber mounting backers and then your light. For me, I need this flat one. So this flat back rubber backer, you can see, it co also comes with a curved one if you were trying to mount this light on a curved surface. I'm doing it flat to the gunnel, so I don't need this one, basically. I need this, I need my screws, and I need my light. So the way I'm doing this, I'm really not doing anything here right now. What I need to do is get this light mounted up front and pull wire to tap into here before I can connect my new light back here. So with that being said, let's just go ahead and take this light, the hardware, and let's move to the front. So coming to the front of the boat, uh, basically the next thing to do is decipher where exactly we want this light to go on the gunnel. So there's a couple things that I take into consideration when you're doing that. Um, one being I like to duplicate that on both sides. So finding a point you can measure from to duplicate it on the other side, just to keep things looking clean and neat. Obviously you don't have to, you can throw them wherever you want. Um, the other thing is, is making sure that nothing covers it up when you're sitting down opening hatches and, and rig and tackle. So in this case, I just have this one hatch, my main rod locker that I need to get in front of, which that's not a big deal because I'm coming up here anyways. So just think about those things. Um, so really, I guess I'm going to measure from this little rub rail here because it's the same exact thing on that side. So I know to be able to match these on both sides, I have to go at least 12 inches down. Get your whatever you have to mark with. So I'm going to go 12 inches right 
there. So I've got my 12 inch mark there. And then deciding where on the gunnel you're putting it. So that was kind of already decided for me because I want to keep everything the same. Um, on the rear lights, those were four inches. The center of that light was four inches down from the top of the gunnel. So that's where I'm going to put these as well. So I line my tape measure up on that 12 inch mark. Put that on the top of the gunnel. Boom. Four inches right there. And then that was to the end of the tape measure. So we'll just kind of tee that off close enough. So X marks the spot. That's where I got to drill a hole. Now, drilling holes in your boat. I understand that it's a very scary thing. I'm going to use this hole saw here. So this is a seven, seven eighths of an inch hole. Um, not too big, but big enough where you're going to have some working room to pull wire and that sort of thing, but it still gets covered up by your light. So that's one thing to consider. The other thing, before you just go punching holes and things, it's always good to make sure there's no wire behind where you're gonna go ahead and drill. I've already checked that. I was able to reach up through the rod locker and I know there's no wires back here. I know we're good from that side and on this side, uh, no wires behind there. I'm really ready to go ahead and punch a hole. I always like to start out slow. All right, so we've got our hole drilled. Nice, beautiful hole in the boat. Now the next thing to do is pull your wire. So now knowing that I am going to need to add wire to this to get it back to that backlight. I am just going to go ahead and snip off a good portion of, I'm going to leave, I don't know, probably 10 inches of wire of this, the, the connected wire to this. So I'm going to go ahead, snip that. And the reason I'm doing that is because I have to add additional wire to this. And I don't want this connection point to be buried in here somewhere. So if something goes wrong with this light, the connection point's going to be right here. I can easily just pull it out, fix it, take it off, whatever I need to do if there is ever an issue. Hopefully there won't ever be one. Next thing would be is getting enough wire to go from here all the way down. I like to kind of do this in tandem, both of these wires, just a little easier. Eh, all right, that will be more than enough. So I take both of these, snip, snip. Okay, now, here, wire strippers, electrical tape. So now we need to connect these wires to the light. Keep in mind, this black piece needs to go on to this first and we're going to take it with all the, the side with all the holes on it that's going to go facing the light so it's going to go just like that boom now we're going to take our heat shrink connectors i need two of these take that there then I'm only going to pinch the one side, crimp that down there. Now I'm going to take my red wire on this side, positives and negatives there, add that there, pinch that down. That's almost ready to be heated. And now, before I heat anything and secure that, I am going to do the same with the negative side. Crimp that down. So now they're crimped. So in theory, they're all good to go. 
other than the fact that we are going to heat these so it becomes a waterproof connection point. Now, I just have a lighter here. Obviously, a heat gun or something of that nature would work as well. But fire it up and just heat it until it shrinks down. That is a waterproof connection here. But before I do anything else, I am going to take some electrical tape and really make sure that that splice is not going to get pulled. Nothing can really happen to it. Another thing you can do if you have two separate wires like this is just every every uh, foot or so, trying to keep it as even as possible, is just throw a little bit of electrical tape around it to kind of keep those wires together since they're not in insulation. All right, now the pulling of the wire. So here is your finished product. You don't need the drill, get that out of the way. Your fish tape. So what this is, is it's basically just a big um, flat piece of metal basically. I mean you can use a piece of cable. Anything that it is going to help you get from that hole to this hole. So what I need to do now is I need to go feed it through that hole and get it up into here. So that's what I'm going to go do. We have a friend with small hands that tends to help. There. So I was able to pull that from there to there. Now I just take this wire and I'm going to go ahead and I want it to be streamlined, right? So I'm going to take the end of the fish tape take my wires, take my electrical tape, and go ahead and tape it together. Now, you don't want to, in this case, I'm not trying to fit it through a tiny um, space, so it's not as important, but if you're really trying to feed it through a small space or where there's a lot of cables, you really want to make sure that that leading edge of the wire is, is covered up and flat, as flat as possible. So in my case, I'm pulling it through a huge space, so it's not as important. I guess really we're going to kind of move back to that other light. So what we can do is get it started up here and then we'll pull it back out this other hole. So we'll just pull this through. Like I said, this is a really wide rigging hole. See, we're already, we're already back through. So we'll just continue to kind of pull. So right there, and then in essence, the next step is connecting your wires. So we're going to get this off the fish tape. And I want to get everything connected to power and test them prior to drilling any more holes or actually mounting the light up front because I want to make sure it works before I um, before I make everything final. So we'll get the fish tape put away and then we'll go right into butt splicing lights together. 
So now that we're back here to our original light, think this is where things get a little bit more exciting. We've got everything pulled, all the wires are pulled. Next step is to get rid of this old light. So take your snippers, boom, boom. Now we can open up our second light. Get our hardware, our flat mounting wheel, and the light. So really we need, once again, eight, 10 inches, something like that. We don't need that, the rest of that cable. All right. Now we're going to get this ready. So now to complete the butt splice. So these two cables coming out of here are for the power and the switch. So um, I need to take all three of these negative wires. So the light from the front and then the two from my switch and power back here. I'm going to take those, connect all three of those. Twist them all together. And I need to do the same thing with all three of the positives. So the two blues and the one red. Try and keep that as clean as possible. And then I'm going to go ahead and take that and get my heat shrink butt splice in there. Once I get that, take that and crimp the one side down. Crimp it down there. Boom. And crimp that side down as well. Now, I'm not going to heat shrink it yet because we still need to connect our actual light. So keep in mind, once again, you want to put this backer plate on there prior to connecting it to your wires. So same deal. So then black to black. Put that in there. Positive wires, red to red, or red and blue in this case. Crimp that down. All right. So now, I guess the next step would be to put some heat to these and shrink them down just like we did at the front. So those are all good and sealed now. Um, basically, the the next thing to do is, just like we did the last time, take a little electrical tape and just kind of bundle all of the all of this clump of wires together. Both of those butt splices. And then I'll take it down these this clump of wires a little bit. So basically with that butt splice, I took the power in the switch cabling, attached it to the front light, and then attached this rear light into that butt splice. So everything is now linked together. Kind of shove all that back in there. So that's what that is going to look like. Just like that. But before I go ahead and drill holes and mount both this light and that light, I'm gonna go ahead, reconnect my power to the battery and make sure that the lights are working. And look at that, we've got light, both here and in the front. Really, we're good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and turn those off, and then we'll get to finishing it up. So now that we know our lights are working, we're good to go, um, it's really just the finishing touch of actually securing them to the side of your boat. So, we can basically, we can get all this stuff out of the way. And now, we gotta get back to drilling some more holes in your boat. So I'm going to take a hole saw out. 
Standard drill bit, and then the little baggie of screws you get. Um, I'm, there's three self-tapping screws in here. I'm gonna take out two of those because that's what I'm using. So for this back light, you can see there's two holes from the previous light. So I'm gonna try and use at least one of those holes. I know these aren't gonna match up perfectly, but it just prevents me from having to drill one more hole in the boat. So I think I'm gonna line it up with this far hole for the screw. And that will work. So I'm gonna just ever so lightly hand tighten that screw into the hole so I can keep everything where I need it to be. And then I'm gonna take my other screw and mark the fiberglass where I'm gonna drill my hole. So now I'm gonna take that out. Got a mark there. And so now I'm just gonna drill my hole. And so you can see these other two holes, they have a countersink to them. And the reason for doing that is that fiberglass and the gel coat can be kind of brittle at the point of where you drill a hole in it. So, especially small holes like this that you're actually gonna put a screw into, having two drills would be useful, but I only have one. So now I'm gonna take my countersink bit. I'm just ever gonna, ever so slightly put a good countersink into it. And so now the edges around that hole, I don't have to worry about them chipping out. So basically now put my Phillips head in, take this screw, Mount that side, and then take this screw and in there. One light is mounted. So now I'm going to go up to the front. We'll do the same thing. We can go ahead, get this cleaned up and do the same thing that we did in the back. So that looks pretty, pretty straight to me. And keep it there, so then I'll take a screw. All right, that is mounted and good to go. So, We've got this side done, now we have to do the other side. Now, it's the exact same process, so I'm not gonna walk through it again, not gonna film it. Uh, but I'm gonna go do that, and then we'll show you what it looks like when we're all done and complete. Well, there it is. We've got the whole boat rigged out, all four lights in, cleaned up, I think ready to go. So, gotta get the tools put away, but hopefully this helped you guys have a little more confidence in installing your own lights in your boat. So, I'm pretty excited about this. I think they look pretty good. And yeah, not that hard to do it yourself.